Hello and welcome to the Championship Prediction Show from the Unsport Podcast. I'm Craig Savage and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. We are back for 2022-23 season where 24 teams battled it out to join the richest league in the world, the Premier League. But we are going to give our predictions of who we think will make it, who we think is going to be the person, who we think is going to get relegated to League One. Let's start with your relegation free. Um, let's start off with who will finish bottom. Yeah, I'm going to have to be quite careful with this one because I am aware that last season when we did our weekly predictions, it didn't tally up at all with what I predicted in the uh, season one. So I'll try to be a bit more careful this year. But bottom of the league, I'm afraid I've gone obvious. And it's a manager I'm a hu- huge admirer of in Paul Warren. But for me, Rotherham, they're becoming a similar story to Norwich in the league above, aren't they? Going down and up and yo-yoing about. They've made some good additions. Obviously, the most notable is someone we know in Peter Chioso. They've added the likes of Tom Eves from Hull. Uh, Cohen Bramwell's come in. He's a decent player. They've got some good players coming into the squad. But they've lost Michael Smith, the top scorer to la- from last year, to League One Sheffield Wednesday. And I'm not sure they can kick on to the next level in what is a very strong championship without points deductions this season. Again, I'd like to see them survive, but probably a bit like you with Peterborough last year. I can't really see how they do it, to be honest. Yeah, I'm um, going to go for tw- uh, for Rotherham as well for 24th. I'm hoping that Paul Warren's learned some lessons, but it's just the championship obviously is different every season that he's been in. And yeah, I have to agree where it's going to be a lot harder this year. I don't. I think there's a bit of a gap of the bottom four or five, and then yeah. to the rest of the league. So it's going to be another tough season for them. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to go for 24th for Rotherham. Uh, let's go for 23rd. I'm going. I'm afraid for second season syndrome for Blackpool. I know that you had them in there last year. Look, they lost Neil Critchley. We covered that earlier in the summer. It was a Probably the shock departure of the summer until Corberan in recent weeks from Huddersfield. A very surprising return for Michael Appleton. Look, it was going to be a tough season anyway. They were probably going to be in the mix for me there, but they overachieved last season. They played good football under a very good coach. I'm not sure they can replicate it. Yes, they've signed some good players. Reese Williams at centre-half on loan from Liverpool is a good one, but I'm afraid to say I see them going down. I wouldn't be shocked if there's a late departure in the transfer window. There's been a few sniffs of interest in people like Josh Bowler, but nobody's moved on yet from the the big boys. So I wonder if that might be an issue as well. But I'd love to be proven wrong because they really entertained us last year. But I think Blackpool, unfortunately, it will be a bridge too far second time around. Uh, 23rd for me, I'm going to go with Birmingham City. Um, This hot mess of a place at St Andrews at the moment. It's It takes another twist. We now know that uh, Maxi Lopez, the former Barcelona player, is now put a stake into the club. That also means Lawrence Bassini will not be in charge of Thank Birmingham God. City. Thank <laughs> life for that. But that does mean John Eustace is under pressure already and we haven't even started. Uh, maybe they don't want him in charge. We don't know yet. At the time of recording, he's still in charge, but we do know that apparently that he's having talks with the new guys there. It's not looking good there. The stadium's falling apart. I mean, money really needs to come in. John Eustace is in charge. Fans probably don't really want him to be in charge. Drifted far away end of last season. So it's going to be, I think, it'll be another tough season for Birmingham. 22nd. Well, your 23rd is my 22nd, Birmingham City. I mean, you make a good point. The season starting even earlier this year makes this harder because we've still got over a month for the transfer window to go. But losing a manager in the middle of pre-season... Uh, a head coach coming in who the fans aren't all behind. Some of them harping back to him, possibly supporting Villa as a kid. And there's lots of controversy around that. The ownership issue is chaos. God knows what's been going on there and whether it will be solved in time, which is probably a big feature of whether they survive or not. We said it in the recent manager special. We think they're in trouble. Yes, they've made a couple of signings. Sanderson's just come back on loan, did well the first half of last year. John Ruddy's come in as the keeper, who'll be a solid addition. But uh, the takeover is crucial, isn't it? The landscape could change massively if it goes well. We saw that with Hull midway through last season. They were able to invest and pull away. But at the moment, they're in a dogfight. They probably would have, well, they would have gone to the final day if it wasn't for point deductions last year. So hard to see them staying up. But there's a couple of messages just above them. Obviously, Reading is someone that has been down there in recent years. Huddersfield lost their manager mid-pre-season and have lost over half their Wembley team. So, 
and Wigan and Sunderland have just come up as well. So there's going to be a few teams in that fight, but I think Birmingham probably the weakest on paper at the minute. My 22nd place, I've narrowed it down to three teams. Uh, Watford is one of them. No, I'm joking, it's not Watford. Um, been nice though. Um, no, it's uh, Reading, Blackpool or Wigan. I'm going to go with Blackpool. Uh, so it'd be the same relegation for both of us, just in different positions. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Blackpool. I wasn't particularly impressed with the Michael Appleton appointment. I think that you said it made a couple of times. I think it's only just been Reese Williams. I said Rich Kuyo signed a new deal. Um, but as you said, people like Josh Bowler and Keshi Anderson, and they're crucial for Blackpool this, uh, for this season. If they keep hold of them, they might stand a chance, but it depends on if Mark Appleton tweaks the way that Neil Critchley had uh, from last season. So I can see them struggling as well. Uh, right, let's move to the top six. Let's start off with the playoffs. Let's start with sixth spot. Oh, this is quite a tough place to start because my top four are basically set in stone. From fifth to ninth, I'm edgy. So I'll go for the three I've missed out. Coventry, I've got in ninth. Then Burnley in eighth, which will be a surprise to you because they've lost a lot of quality defensively and they're going to be relying on very young players. Vincent Company, I know he did it at Anderlecht, but it took him time there. So I think they'll have one season, then they'll have a great one. But that could change depending on how Burnley's transfer window finishes. At the moment, they're in eighth, but if they sign well towards the end, could be top six. I've got Millwall just missing out in seventh because although they lost Jed Wallace, they brought in a guy from uh, Fortuna Sittard who scores one in two in attacking midfield. So they might not notice he's gone. Uh, they brought back Honeyman as well, which was a really good signing from Hull, who I thought was good and a couple of good Leeds loanies. But just missing out because, look, the badge is there. The bias is there. I'm going for Luton Town in sixth place again. Look, very similar to last season, Craig. They've strengthened up front to protect Adebayo, which we saw in the playoffs how crucial it was when he was out injured. Now got Corley Woodrow, Colton Morris and Harry Cornick, obviously, who had a good season last year. Can't have as bad luck with injuries again this time around. And the main reason I've gone for Luton in sixth is because I think they're going to be one of the main beneficiaries from the Winter World Cup. Because apart from the goalkeeper Horvath and maybe Tom Lockyer, we're probably not going to have any players going, which means we've basically got another month's break in the middle of the season. I think it's going to be a really good season for the Hatters. It, it does partly depend on how Amari Bell slots into centre-half to replace Naismith, who we obviously lost to Bristol City. Uh, if Doughty can then replicate the quality at left wing back. Um, and I think Horvath's a great signing in goal. So just Luton in sixth, you might say I'm biased, but between them, Millwall and Burnley, I think it's drawing from a hat, basically. And people say I'm the biased one with these <laughs> predictions, but I have not put Luton in the top six. <laughs> I'll definitely predict them to lose on match day one to Bogey Club Birmingham, if that makes anyone feel better. Um, yeah, Luton, for me, I've not made the playoffs. Uh, I've got them in eighth and uh, be another good season anyway. Uh, but they'll be challenging. They'll be challenging. It ain't going to be a Barnsley for Luton that they haven't really lost that. They haven't only lost an Aismith, really. And uh, I think that's more likely to be Huddersfield, isn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah. Six of their Wembley 11 gone. <laughs> mm. uh, right. Um, Six for me, I've decided it's a toss up between the two northeast sides of Millsborough and Sunderland. Um, but I'm just gonna go for Middlesbrough to sneak in. I trust Wilder more than Alex Neil, to be fair. Uh, I think those made some really good signings. Zach Stefan in goal is a very good signing, young keeper, American. Although they lost Jed Spence, but they didn't play Jed Spence last season, uh, so that don't really matter. Um, but they still got Isaiah Jones, they still got Matt Crooks. So I, I think those were, I've strengthened uh, quite well in this transfer window. So I'm just going to go for them ahead of Sunderland just because of experience of that. Sunderland players, even though they've got some good players, just not enough. I think the crowd gets them going for Sunderland that's staying in the light. And we know that we've seen the documentaries and it's and I think they're grateful now. They've been in five years in League One to realise how how tough the championship is. I, I think they do far too naive a couple of seasons ago. Right, fifth. It's funny, actually. You mentioned Sunderland in seventh. I had them in 18th, just out of curiosity. Oh, because, okay. Uh, okay. I, I think they just need a steady season. In fifth place, I've stuck with the region. I'm going for Watford in fifth place. And I'm going to have to explain this one because we've heard all summer about the change in strategy and the constant carousel of head coaches not coming around again. But Watford, like it or not, still have some very good players and should be in the mix. I think they'll sack Rob Edwards in the Winter World Cup break. I honestly believe that. I think he'll have a poor start and I think they'll get rid of him. But they'll always recover to the playoffs because they've got a good championship side. If Saar and Pedro stay, they should blitz a lot of bottom half defences. And look, 
on paper, they should be making it. The parachute teams traditionally do. I know we had West Brom have a poor year last year, but for me, Watford will make the top six. And I'm going in fifth place only because of the poor start and another managerial change. Uh, let's repeat that because I've also gone for Watford in fifth. Um, <laughs> it annoys me in a way that I'm going to say Watford fifth because it annoys me that these yo-yo clubs, as we say, I know we've had Robin for like pretty much be finishing bottom, but teams like Watford and teams like Norwich, we know they're going to be up there again this season. All right, we haven't even got to where you think Norwich, well, yep. Yeah, if you do put Norwich in this top, well, top four now, I presume you would. But yeah, I think Watford being the top four, uh, top six. Yes, they'll sack Rob Edwards. They'll have, I think they'll have a poor start. I haven't been convinced. I know it's, it's pre-season and I don't care about pre-season results, but they haven't looked good in these pre-season results. Results uh, do tell a story. But yeah, I'm going to go Watford for fifth. Uh, four. Another team that's already come up in your top six. I'm going for Middlesbrough. And the reason I'm going for them, and I've pushed them up a couple of places in recent weeks, is with the Jed Spence money, they're now going to go out and get a couple of strikers. And we saw last January when they brought in loads of strikers on loan and tried everything to find a goal scorer. If they can get one right this summer, they'll be right up there. Because let's be honest, that's what they were missing last season. They didn't need too much work through the rest of the team, but they have added some solid additions. I know you're not a massive fan of Daryl Lenehan, but he's a solid championship centre-half. He's a leader. He's someone in the dressing room who will be useful, particularly with the experience they've lost. They've added Ryan Giles, who's got quality championship know-how as well. The key's the two ends of the pitch for me. Zach Steffen, you mentioned, regular football. It's not something he's had the last couple of years. It'll be interesting to see how he does. And as we mentioned, probably him and the Luton keeper vying for a place in the World Cup with the US. Uh, and they've got to find a striking power. Can Josh Coburn step up? He's a year older now. Can they bring in one or two to supplement the goals? Because the loans last year just didn't work. As long as they find a 15 goal a season striker up top, for me, they're in the top four or five. I've gone for West Brom to finish fourth. And the only reason I'm going for West Brom is the Steve Bruce effect. He's had six months now in charge of West Brom. He's had to do a bit of clear out because that West Brom side since he took over were absolutely awful. So he's had the summer now that he can hopefully rebuild. It's if the fans get on his back. That's going to be the key thing for West Brom this season. If fans, get, if fans turn, it, it will get messy for them. So I think fourth, but who you have for third? I have your fourth place, West Bromwich Albion. No first. way! Oh, I wasn't. I'm, like, I'm worried what? after last year how okay. similar we are. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. Okay, fine. Move on. Um, so, yeah, Steve Bruce has done exactly what we expect. Basically the same as you. Look, he's a championship expert. He's seen the area where West Brom are weakest and he's focused on it. How many times last year did we watch West Brom, even under Ishmael, when they were winning 1 0? They were relying on a moment of magic from Carl and Grant. Obviously, Daryl DK is going to be back to fitness now and they'll be expecting similar from him. But the additions in midfield are clearly with the intent of adding goal support for the strikers. John Swift and Jed Wallace, probably over the last three or four years, two of the top scoring midfielders in the championship, two of the most creative midfielders in the championship, excellent additions to the team. You've got Jason Malumbi adding youth and legs into the middle of the park, a good signing for a pretty good fee as well. I can see West Brom, and I know you might not agree having had them in fourth. I can actually see them being in a three-horse race with my top two. I think the top three will pull away, as we traditionally saw in a championship in some previous years. But I'm, I'm opting for them just to miss out, because compared to my top two, I think they'll be slightly weaker defensively. But going forward through the midfield, massive improvement. I'm really impressed with what Steve Bruce has done. He always seems to do it at this level. Could he be the Mick McCarthy of your <laughs> predictions for last season? With all that championship experience and get absolutely nowhere. Third place for me, I'm going with Sheffield United. I made a mistake with Paul Heckenbottom <laughs> back in last did. season. I think we both did. And uh, obviously they made the playoffs and they should really have gone through to the final as well. So they need to just add maybe one more or two more extra players. Um, and I think they'll be absolutely fine, um, Sheffield United. So... Brewster needs a good season. I know I keep criticising Rian Brewster. He needs a big season on that. He's bed, obviously injury-free. McBurney's still out. If they can get Brewster scoring, Sheffield up will be right up there um, in the playoffs or even challenging for the top two. So big season for them. It just yeah, depends on how well the top two do for my predictions and your top two, because you didn't have Sheffield United in the playoffs either. So you didn't actually you didn't go anywhere near the top 10. But we'll get to that after this. Uh, right. Uh, who do you think is going to win the playoffs? 
So based on my predictions, West, West Brom, Brom, Millsborough, Watford or Luton. Yeah, I'll West tell you Brom, what, Watford, Watford, Luton play a final. It sounds lovely. <laughs> it would be lovely, but it's not going to happen. West Brom will beat Luton in the semi-finals. Middlesbrough v Watford. I'm going to edge Watford. And then West Brom, Steve Bruce again will beat Watford in the final to return to the Premier League at the second attempt and do what they should have done last year. So I've got Sheffield United, Millsborough, which is the Wilder derby, and then West Brom, Watford. Oh, so your semi-final is my final. West yeah, Brom, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Uh, I think Sheffield United will beat Millsborough. I'm going to go West Brom to beat Watford. So Sheffield United beat West Brom in the Battle of Bramall Lane at Wembley. Not very good at playoffs, Sheffield United, but I'm, I'm, they're going to break the streak. I'm going to go tip them to win. So we've both gone for our third place teams to be promoted to the Premier League. And um, right, let's get on to the top two. Uh, second place. Lovely to see your first uh, notebook slap of the season, by the way. Thank you very much. It's just that. sheets of paper. It's sheets <laughs> of paper. My notebook's coming next week. <laughs> second place. Uh, probably your winners, I would imagine. I've gone for Norwich City in second place. They are... My same old story, and that's going to leave you with a head scratcher for my winners because, you know, last season's a good one to go by. But look, Norwich, same old seat story. Yo-Yo Club, they haven't lost any one of note to Premier League clubs because their players have never stepped up when they've got promoted, maybe with the slight exception of Pookie. They've added Isaac Hayden for a bit of bite in midfield. They've got a manager that's won championship promotion before in Dean Smith. I have no doubt they'll yo-yo again. And looking at the other sides that aren't massively strong, Norwich are the most stable. Second place, they'll be promoted again. I'm not sure if they might be able to nick the title. As I said, I think it will be a three-horse race, but Norwich is certainly in my top two. Norwich are my second place team as well. Um, I am sick and tired of teams like Norwich and Watford. I really am, because I know they're going to be strong um, in the championship. Norwich haven't really lost many players. I don't think they have, which is weird. Every time they get relegated, they don't lose players. Because they're not good enough for the Premier League. I because like Puk- Pukki is somehow in this, still in the club. I cannot yeah. believe no one's actually gone for Pukki. Uh, oh. If he's in a decent team, he might actually do okay. But no one's gone for Pukki. It's over 30, uh, isn't he? But yeah, Norwich, uh, stability is key for uh, Norwich. Cantwell have probably back into the side now after having a really poor loan move from to, uh, from, uh, to Bournemouth. So he want to prove a point. Dean Smith got that experience in the championship as well. So it's going to be, uh, I don't see them winning it. I, I think my first place team will run away with it if he gets it right. Um, so yeah, Norwich second. Who do you think? I'm trying to figure out who you've got to win it. And I can't figure it out. If you say Bristol City, I'll go mad. I haven't got Bristol City. You've probably got Burnley. So we'll get to that in a minute. But I have gone for Sheffield United to win the league. Ah, of course, and of course, of course. The reason I've gone for it, I mean, you mentioned it a couple of minutes ago. Paul Heckenbottom proved both of us very wrong. If he'd been there from the start of the season in the same form, they would have been in the top two mix. And he almost took them all the way. They pushed Forrest closer than we expected after watching the first leg. He made a mistake tactically in the first half of the semi-final first leg. If he hadn't done that, they probably would have gone to Wembley. If he can get the front line fitter and firing, you mentioned it in your bit for Sheffield United. Brewster's been brilliant in pre-season. If he carries that into the season... That's the difference for me because they had everything else there from goalkeeper to midfield. They were rock solid for the second half of last year. They're going to be in the three horse race. Sander Berger showed his quality last season in the second half. Looked absolutely fantastic. Mentioned Kieran Clark coming in experience centre half. Tommy Doyle, young midfielder from City, quality player. They've just got that little extra bit of depth. They've added some quality to the squad. I'm really optimistic for their new season. And as long as Brewster has that year, we know he can have. He did it with Swansea before in the championship. We know he can score goals. If they've got that, they'll still have people like Billy Sharp popping up with a few. They're going to be right up there. For me, that top three is so far clear of the rest, but I'm sure we'll be surprised again because last year I was miles off. Yeah. So Sheffield United should be worried, I think. Shifting knife 18th like Cardiff last season. Um, for me, I'm going for Burnley um, to win it. I think company is a good move. It will have Pep to sp- You can listen to Pep, give him some of to give uh, company some advice and some uh, players. Craig, and some players. Uh, Craig Burnley's there as well. So Craig yeah. Burnley knows the championship as well. Obviously, very good uh, centre forward at his, in his time. I, uh, Scott Twine signed for four mil. I think it's a very good uh, signing uh, from MK. Yeah, I, I just think Burnley be fine. I really do. I say I say parachute payment, but that parachute payment is probably buggered off somewhere else for that loan, uh, sixty mil loan. But I think they'll be fine, Burnley. I think they'll give company a chance, and I think they're going to win it. 
ahead of uh, the rest. Good to see Bailey Peacock Farrell getting a chance in goal as well at the moment. So I, I just worry defensively having lost Tarkovsky, me and Pope and then Hennessy, the backup keeper, that they'll be a, a little bit inexperienced. But the players they've got on loan in defence are players that did well in the championship last year. So you might well be right. Let's have a quick recap what we have predicted for the championship in 22-23. Uh, Daniel Cody has gone for uh, Sheffield United to win it with Norwich in second place. In the playoffs, West Brom, Middlesbrough, Watford and Luton uh, with West Brom winning the playoffs. Birmingham in 22nd, Blackpool 23rd and Rotherham 24th. I've gone for Burnley to win it, Norwich in second, Sheffield United in third, West Brom fourth, Watford fifth and Middlesbrough sixth with Sheffield United promoted. In the bottom three, I've gone for Blackpool, Birmingham and Rotherham. And that is our choices for the championship in 22-23. Do you agree with us or disagree with us? Let us know in the comments down below. We'll be back with weekly championship predictions coming next week for the opening day of the season. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Honest Football Podcast. You can join us on the Honest Football Podcast. Click the join button below. Uh, don't forget to like it. I said like already, but don't matter. Like it again. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. <laughs>